In this short video, we're going to show you how to convert Kaggle's natural language processing with disaster tweets competition into a Kubeflow pipeline using the Kale Jupyter Lab extension. So if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure that you deploy Kubeflow. In this case, we've used Kubeflow as a service uh, to deploy Kubeflow. We go to the notebooks view, click on new notebook. Let's go ahead and name our notebook. In this case, disaster tweets Kale. We want to make a few tweaks to the default uh, configuration. We want to give ourselves 12 gigabytes of RAM. We want to give ourselves 60 gigabytes of storage. If we can take the rest of the defaults, click the launch button. And once that notebook server is up and running, we're ready to connect to it. And this is going to bring up the Jupyter Labs uh, interface. And from here in the launcher, let's open up a terminal, do a git clone of the Qflow slash examples repository. And once that repository has been pulled down with all the files, data, and notebooks uh, that we need, let's go ahead and click on the examples directory and locate the disaster tweets uh, directory. And now we're looking for the Kale notebook. So open that up. Let's get a little bit of real estate. And you can see next that we'll need to enable the Kale Jupyter Lab extension. You can see the notebook has already been pre annotated for us. More on that in just a second. So let's go ahead and do a pip install using a requirements.txt file. So go ahead and run that cell. And while we wait for uh, various items to get downloaded and installed, we'll wait for our output to tell us it's been uh, successfully installed. And once we do that, we're going to need to restart. Uh, the kernel. So go ahead and restart the kernel. And with the kernel restarted, we can actually come back to this particular cell and turn it into a skip cell uh, annotation so that when we run the notebook, we won't have to repeat this particular step. So let's take a look at what's happening in the balance of the notebook. In this cell group, uh, we're doing imports. In this particular cell group, we're doing our load data. That's our first step. In our second step, this is where we do our exploratory data analysis. You can see that it depends on the load data step. Uh, so there's quite a few cells here that are in that particular pipeline step. Our next step is going to be our pre-processing data step, which you can see depends on the previous step. Next up is our corpus creation step, which depends on the pre-process data step. A little bit further down in the notebook is the embedding step. That's going to be our next pipeline step, which again, you can see depends on the previous step. In our next pipeline step, which is the baseline model step, you can see that it depends on the embedding step. And then we wrap things up with our final pipeline step, which is our training model step. Now we're ready to go ahead and click the compile and run button. A few things are going to be happening here. First, uh, the notebook will be validated. Uh, second, a snapshot will be taken of the notebook, the data in the environment. We compile it, we upload it, and we're ready to actually view the execution of the pipeline itself. So here within the runs view, you can see in real time, our runtime execution graph is populated. We've created a volume, we've loaded data, uh, we've done our exploratory data analysis, we've pre-processed the data, we did our corpus creation, and now we are doing our embedding step and then our um, final uh, model step, and then we'll wrap things up with the train model step. And that's it. You've successfully created a Qflow pipeline using the Kale Jupyter Lab extension for Kaggle's natural language processing with disaster tweets competition.